decade, our next guest lives alongside Butler's housekeepers, billionaires, in a world where PJs meant private jets rather than PJs. And after travelling the world as a private tutor for the children of the rich and famous, Matt Knott is giving readers a hilarious insight into the experience in his new book, A Class of Their Own. There it is, there we right go. there. If you're lucky, Matt, this will get the Hammond treatment later on, sure. If you like... Oh, I'll do it now for it, well, you. No, she, normally, if the interview goes well, she kind of looks down the barrel and then we hear a little... Thing, whoa, 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 sure whoa, go, whoa, Matt. whoa. <laughs> Can we get some sort of that's ding? That's the money shot, Matt. You, Amazing. you need this. Some kind of ding. <laughs> normally, we get a ding there and that's it. <laughs> then you're Amazon number one. Right. <laughs> I don't know where the ding's... The ding guy's got the day off, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Matt, listen, you spent a decade teaching the children of the super rich. Firstly, what made you want to become a... You're a writer now and, and a screenwriter. What made you want to become a, a tutor at the time or is it something you just fell into? Well, I, yeah, I had this dream of becoming a writer and I graduated in the middle of the last recession and I needed a way to pay the rent. Yeah. And I heard about private tutoring, specifically um, what's called being a study buddy, which is basically where you're helping kids do their homework. And it, it seemed like, you know, relatively easy. I, I even had one mum say to me, oh, you know, we, he doesn't really need a tutor, but everyone else in his class have one, has one. So they just got a tutor because they could afford you? Yeah. Exactly. As it was like almost go, an accessory at times. Do you have to train specifically to be the tutor, or is it, or you just, is it just you? you do well, it? this was kind of the entry level tutoring, gotcha. but I, as my um, career develops, I got into this much more high pressured type of tutoring, which is really about families from all around the world who wanted to get their kids into certain private schools. And so a class of their own is a, the story of that journey, which took me from Dubai to Tuscany and Moscow and Miami, as I kind of gradually started working for these clients that, you know, well, the, wealthier and wealthier. Because on one hand, I mean, you've got some great tales and the anecdotes are brilliant, but there's a sad undertone to all of this, isn't it? Which is the, this pressure that's heaped on these poor kids that are, you know, born into immense privilege, but it's not their fault they're born into immense privilege. And, and, and it's, you know, at very young ages, they've got to try and get into these schools. Yeah, they, they were often under a lot of pressure and often also they, you know, their parents had kind of outsourced things to oh, so many different oh, staff that I did feel at times that I was kind of paying to be their friend, yeah. being paid oh. to be their friend. And actually also at times it was almost like I was being paid to be friends with the mothers sometimes. Um, there were, you know, there were some who, who really enjoyed spending time with a tutor and even kind of got drunk and confessed their marital woes to me. Oh, my God. It's really, yeah, you really get... Well, you I'm trying to teach the... algebra here. Exactly. <laughs> well, all right, get, I'll have another drink. You know, you're thrust into the heart. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yes, you, you were saying in, in the book that you actually spent some time in the sauna with someone else's wife. That was mad. <laughs> with... No, so I had, I was, they sent me out to Moscow yeah. because there was an oligarch who wanted his son to get into Eton. And I, I was taken to meet him at this lovely restaurant. And then they said to me um, at the end of the meal, Miat, you can come here whenever you like and eat whatever you want because we own it. Um, <gasps> so, you know, that's the level. They own of, the whole restaurant. They just bought themselves a restaurant to kind of make fine dining more convenient. But yeah, so I've been spending a lot of time with the oligarch's wife. Uh, to the extent that we'd, for some reason, given her son the nickname Little Piggy, and um, it was just a. a Hang natural... on, who had the nickname? Are you? No, so he the was Little, little Piggy because the, the ten-year-old yeah. boy, the oligarch's son, because yeah. I think because he loved second helpings or something. You know, it was an affectionate name from his mother. But the natural evolution was that uh, she then got the nickname Mummy Piggy, and I was Daddy Piggy. So Daddy Piggy wasn't Daddy Piggy. You were Daddy Piggy. Da I was Daddy Piggy. So what was Daddy Piggy? What well, was Daddy the Piggy, Daddy? I was, well, Daddy Oligarch one day came home and he, wasn't um, happy about Daddy he learned about these nicknames. But funnily enough, he wasn't that, he wasn't angry or anything. I think he just thought, you know, it's time for me to bond with the tutor. Um, and so he invited me to have a sauna, which being an oligarch, he had one in his basement. And he walked in completely naked. Um, and yeah, it was who's surreal. the Daddy Piggy now? <laughs> exactly. You know, he was he was showing me who's boss, and it was surreal because there was a kind of um, you know, uh, speakers playing playing like a panpipe cover of Bridge Over Troubled Water. <laughs> there was a disco this is light. So surreal. There was a disco light kind of rotating, and we were both wearing these felt caps that you wear to keep your heads cool. Yeah. And then um, part of the traditional Russian banya experience is that you get spanked with birch branches. <laughs> So, this, you know, there's not a line in the tutoring handbook oh, about what you do man. when a naked Russian oligarch offers to spank you in his basement sauna. <laughs> so did you he, say was yes. he spanking you? Oh, I mean, you know, the client is always right, so I, I right. let him spank me as much as he likes. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> but here I am. I, I lived to tell the tale. Oh, Do you have to spank brilliant. him as well? <laughs> I, um, I, I, I believe I declined and I, I even declined, you know, I, I, oh. I kept my trunks on because, you know... It's too early in the morning, What's the guys? pressure yeah. like on you to get these kids into the school? So, so if you don't... Because you can only do so much, right, if a kid wants to learn or, if, you know, if a kid's not academically gifted yeah. as such, then they're not going to get into the school that their parents desperately want to get into. That's the thing that I found is that you, you know, often the parents... The places at these schools, it, it's one of the few things that they can't just buy directly, and so they throw money at the tutor. But sometimes a kid is just destined to be academic or not. Sure. And I, I did some volunteer tutoring in state schools with, um, you know, kids who couldn't have afforded it otherwise. And you really did, that gave me some more perspective, and you realise that sometimes it's not about just innate ability, it's about confidence and whether yeah. they've been kind of trained to be in that environment. But yeah, no, sometimes if, if the goal was to get, get the kid into a particular school, then you would you'd be, you'd be wined and dined and welcomed into the family. And then when you get the in results day, it's either, you know, a nice bonus or... We'll never see you again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you get any parents who were really difficult? Uh, I had, yeah. I had quite a few. Um, you know, every family is different. There was one mother who told me that um, her son had a very particular diet. He only liked to eat things if they were dry and crunchy. So and salads. So she, well, <laughs> it, crisps and I don't know where this oh, came from, but she asked, she said, could you try and expand his palate? And so I was like, what, what? do, do I, am I meant to be doing times tables with him or am I meant to be kind of feeding him sure. hummus? I, it was really, like, I didn't know how to, um, and to solve that did one. Did you make notes as you were going, or did you just have quite a good memory for, to, for writing this down? Well, especially when I was going abroad to all these countries, um, and some of this was, you know, I started in 2008 when we were all emailing a lot, so I have these, these emails to, you know, I was just incredulous. I was, it was like in the, in the line, The Witch in the Wardrobe, when Lucy goes mm. to Narnia and she comes back and is like, guys, you're not going to believe what I've just seen. That was me, and I was emailing my parents and emailing my friends, like, you know, naked Russian oligarch, and people are like, wow. We've got to be really quick, because we've got to think, go to the break, but does money make you happy? That's my last question to you. Yes or no? No, you know, some of these families were so much fun and they really enjoyed their wealth, and other families, that you have, no matter what they had, it was not going to make them happy. So that was kind of nice, a nice to learn. Matt, it's uh, been fascinating. This is the book, uh, A Class of Their Own, Adventures in Tutoring the Super Rich. I hope you get to adapt this as well, because it'd be great to see this. That TV is uh, the plan, and I'm hoping that either yeah. Harry Styles or Timothy Chalamet will play me. Oh, I know them both. <laughs> and, you know, we're going to need a, an oligarch and his wife as well, so I'll maybe... Put in a word Hello! I'll put a word <laughs> An oligarch and his yeah. wife, he said. Hey, hey. How's your Russian accent? Oh, never mind my Russian accent, I'll get my whip ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank Thanks, you, Matt. Matt. It's been a pleasure.